So after looking at the factor shifting the four employment line, IS curve and LM curve, we want to combine all of them together and then we want to see if we can use all these frameworks or building blocks for us to conduct the Keynesian type of analysis. So what we want to do next is that we want to talk about the ISLM equilibrium. So then to look at the ISLM equilibrium, the first thing we want to look at is that we need to define what is equilibrium. So in here we say the equilibrium is a condition in which all acting influences are cancelled by each other resulted in a stable, balanced or unchanged system. Basically, we can say that all the quantity demanded need to be equal to all the quantity supplied and that is the equilibrium of the markets. So then, what is the general equilibrium? It is more of the equilibrium concept under the macro study. So we say when the economy attains the general equilibrium, we are talking about that all the markets in the economy attains the equilibrium. Therefore, if in this economy we have labor markets, the goods market, and the money market, when we are talking about the general equilibrium, we say that the labor market, the goods market, and the money market all need to attain equilibrium at the same time, then we say the economy attains the general equilibrium. So then, on the contrary, what is the partial equilibrium? The, the partial equilibrium tells us that it can be the case that for some market it doesn't attain the equilibrium, but for some market it attains the equilibrium. So then here the definition of the partial equilibrium is that not all but some market are in equilibrium. So then how to conduct the Keynesian type of analysis from the ISLM's perspective? Well, before we do that, we need to further talk about the equilibrium concept under the classical view and the Keynesian view. Under the classical view, we assume that the price adjusts rapidly. Therefore, under the classical view, all the market will attain the equilibrium in a really short time. Therefore, the equilibrium we are talking about under the classical view usually is about the general equilibrium. However, under the Keynesian view, uh, it allows the price to be sticky. In other words, under the Keynesian view, we assume that in the short run, because the price is sticky, some market may not attain equilibrium in the short run. However, in the long run, when the price stickiness got resolved, then the economy will then attain the equilibrium for all the markets. Therefore, from the Keynesian perspective, we separated the equilibrium into two time frames. One is in the short run and the other is in the long run. We say that in the short run, because the price is sticky, we allow not all the markets to attain the equilibrium. Because when the price is sticky, some market may not function well due to the price stickiness. Then, under the short run, we focus on the partial equilibrium for the Keynesian type of analysis. However, in the long run, all the market will restore the equilibrium. In other words, in the long run, all the market will attain the equilibrium. Because of that, we say in the long run, we will focus on the general equilibrium. Therefore, from this discussion, you will see that under the classical view, we are talking about the general equilibrium because the price is flexible and then the price can adjust rapidly so all the market will attain equilibrium rapidly therefore under the classical view we focus on the general equilibrium however under the Keynesian view we separate it into short run and long run in the short run we allow partial equilibrium however in the long run we also assume that the economy will attain the general equilibrium therefore we say that under either view, the classical view and the Keynesian view, both view coincide in the long run. That is, in the long run, we look at the general equilibrium, which is the equilibrium of all the markets. However, under the Keynesian view, we allow some market to be off the equilibrium in the short run. And then so, under the Keynesian type of analysis, when it is in the short run, then we look at the partial equilibrium. So then here, 
we want to start to use the building blocks we learned about the ICLM analysis to come up with the equilibrium. So in here we define the showrun equilibrium under the ICLM analysis. We say that somehow we assume the labor market adjusts slowly. So then in here we say under the Keynesian view in the short run, some market can be off the equilibrium. And in here we assume the labor market can be off the equilibrium. In other words, when we are looking at the equilibrium of the economy, we only have the money market and the goods market to be in equilibrium in the short run. So then in terms of the IS curve, LM curve and the full employment line, given that we allow the labor market to be off the equilibrium, therefore when we are doing the short run analysis, then we can drop the full employment line because the labor market no longer attain the equilibrium and then we can just focus on the IS curve and the LM curve and determine the short run equilibrium of the economy. Then how about in the long run? We say that in the long run the ICLM analysis also assumes that all the market need to be in equilibrium. And then by when they want to attain the equilibrium, we allow the price to change to attain the equilibrium. So then the implication of that is that after all the market responses to the shock, then the price will change to restore the general equilibrium. Therefore, in terms of the drawing of the ice curve, LM curve, and full employment line, we know now the equilibrium is that when the labor market is in equilibrium, so now we can look at the, the full employment line. We know the goods market is in equilibrium, so then we can look at the IS curve, and then the intersection of the IS curve already determine the equilibrium of the economy. So then the LM curve may not hit the same point because we know two lines determine an intersection. Given that right now we are looking at intersection of the full employment line, IS curve and LM curve, we need to first move two lines and then allow the third line to move. And under the long run case, under the ICLM analysis, we allow the LM curve to move the last because we say by the end or when the economy want to move to the long run equilibrium, we allow the price to change. And what we know is that when the price got changed, it will shift the LM curve, but we, it will not affect the full employment line and the IS curve. Therefore, when we want to come up with the long run equilibrium for the Keynesian type of analysis, we first draw the full employment line line, we then draw the IS curve, then we know these two markets is in equilibrium, then we allow the price to change, which we allow the LM curve to move, such that it will be able to hit the intersection of the full employment line and the IS curve, and then we will be able to identify the general equilibrium of this economy. So then the last thing is that the economy will restore the general equilibrium by adjusting the prices. So to wrap up the discussion related to the equilibrium under the Keynesian type of analysis, in here we say that in the short run, we focus on the partial equilibrium. Because of that, in here we allow the labor market to be off the equilibrium, therefore we will not look at the full employment line. So then what we focus on is about the goods market equilibrium, which is represented by the IS curve, and then the money market equilibrium, which is represented by the LM curve. Therefore, to come up with the equilibrium of the economy based on the Keynesian approach, in the short run, we simply draw the IS curve and the LM curve. And the intersection of this two line will represent the, uh, the equilibrium real interest rate and the equilibrium output of this economy in the short run. Then in the long run, under the Keynesian type of analysis, we also look at the general equilibrium. Therefore, we not only look at the goods market equilibrium, which is represented by the IS curve, we also look at the money market equilibrium, which is represented by the LM curve, and also the labor market equilibrium, which is represented by the full employment line. So then, in the long run, 
we look at the intersection of the IS curve, LM curve, and four impermanent line to come up with the general equilibrium for this economy. Therefore, for the Keynesian type of analysis, we know in the first step we look at the short run and then we look at the intersection of the IS curve and LM curve. And then in the long run, we know that all the market need to be in equilibrium by adjusting the price. Therefore, we first identify the intersection of the full employment line and the IS curve, and then we know what should be the equilibrium, real interest rate, and the output in the long run. And then, because we also know that the money market need to be in equilibrium in the long run, so then what we do is that we adjust the price and then we allow the LM curve to shift to the intersection of the full employment line and the IS curve. So then after all these three steps, the economy goes through the short run and the long run. And then it starts from the partial equilibrium to the general equilibrium after a shock. And then the equilibrium of the economy can be restored. So in here we complete the discussion about how to use the building blocks of the Keynesian type of analysis to come up with the partial equilibrium and the general equilibrium. And this is the end of today's lecture.